Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, I have here a special paper, actually. This is a paper um, two um, from the IGCSE syllabus, the new syllabus that is effective from 2020. This uh, was the paper that was supposed to be set in February, March 2020, but it was cancelled, that, that session was cancelled because of coronavirus, as was the June session. Um, but the examining board published the paper um, for revision purposes, I guess, because this is the first ever paper of the new specification where uh, there's some new topics that have been added, some topics have been removed, and so on. Okay, so um, I'm going to be going through this paper and um, trying to upload it all before the October November 2020 session, which will be the first actual session that took place with the new paper, uh, with the new syllabus. So without further ado, I'll continue. So this is the paper two. So remember the paper two is out of, 100, uh, out of 70 marks, sorry. It's out of 70 marks. There's normally about 20 odd questions in it. Sometimes you know, it can be closer to 20, sometimes 25 or so. Um, and here they tell you the instructions. So you have one and a half hours and um, you have to use a black or dark blue pen. It has to be dark because they scan the papers in. When they um, get the mark, they get scanned in, and you, you may use a HB pencil for diagrams, so you should use a pencil for diagrams, especially when you have to do shading, because then it's very difficult, if you make a mistake, to remove the shading if you've done it in pen. Um, don't use erasable pens or correction fluids, because sometimes you you use a whiteout of something and you wait for it to dry and you go on and then you forget to fill out that space and never do that. Just cross out something that you've got wrong and write it next to the, write the answer next to it. If you don't have space, there's some blank pages at the end which you can use. Um, write your answer in the answer space. That doesn't mean you're working. The working should be in the space around it, but the actual answer space should be your final answer. And don't write on the barcodes, calculator, tracing paper you can use. Um, you, it's good for you to be, make sure that there's tracing paper available at your centre, uh, either by asking your teachers or something, because that's important. That's something that helps you with certain topics, and, um, and so on. So the rest of the stuff we'll go through when we get to the actual questions. So now, let's start with question number one. Okay, I'm going to do this question by question, uh, one video at a time, um, because then I can arrange them according to topic as well as according to the paper. So you could bear with me with that. Hopefully you'll find everything in the playlist uh, that you need. I'll have a playlist, um, a link for the playlist for the paper and a link for the playlist for the particular topic that question was from um, at the end of the video. Okay, now, question number one. We're told to find, or from the list, write down a number that is a multiple of three. So if you look at the list, a multiple of three are the numbers that are in the three times table. Okay, like 3, 6, 9, 12. Okay, so you can see that's 12. That's a multiple of 3. Okay, this is divisible by 3. It gives you a whole number. A cube number is a number that when you cube it, you get that result. And you should know your cube numbers. I mean, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8. So you can see straight away it's 8. 2 times 2 times 2. Nice and simple question. A prime number is a number that is defined as a number which has exactly two factors. 1 and itself. Okay, so exactly two factors, no more and no less. Okay, so if you think about these numbers, they have to be integers, so it can either be 5, 8, or 12. Well, we can see 8 is, you've got more than two factors. You've got 1, and you've got 2, and you've got 4, and you've got 8. And so same with 12, you've got more than two factors. 5 is the only number which has exactly two factors, 1 and itself. Okay, it doesn't have any more or any less. Okay, that's the reason why 1 is not considered a prime number, because it doesn't have exactly two factors, it has just one factor, which is itself. And an irrational number is a number, okay, if you, it could be either pi, which you don't have a pi there, um, or it could be the square root of a number that's not a perfect square. So we can see that that's straight away root 7. Okay, if you wanted to check about root 196, you could. You can say the square root of 196, and if it doesn't give you a whole number, then it is irrational if it does give you a whole number or a number which basically stops. It doesn't have to be a whole number, but a number which is rational, which uh, well, this is a whole number now, but if it gave you, for example, a half or three over two or two over three, it's a number that has a stop to it, has an end to it, 
okay it's a terminating decimal then it is a rational number so this is irrational root 7 if you try to find the square root of 7 it will give you a decimal that continues on and on uh, without any pattern any square root or non-square number will continue on like that okay so there we have question number one it's just a question about uh, different types of number and I'm going to stop there unless question two is also about number no okay so I'll stop there and you will find a link to the other questions on this paper somewhere about here before the end of the video a link to questions about this topic of numbers okay in the playlist over here if you click on that it will take you to the playlist for that and if you want to subscribe to the channel you'll find some icon over here to subscribe thank you for watching